So last week we were talking about how um, having conversations with folks who are not in agreement with our opinions, who don't seem to be able to view non-subjective things non-subjectively and subjective things subjectively. And we talked about how I used the Notes app on my phone to flush out things I'm feeling, thinking, uh, gives me an outlet to express myself to a willing audience, that audience being myself, of course. Now, this part of the conversation, with it, I want to address this idea that the injustice or the the inappropriateness or the unfairness of having a conversation with somebody who you perceive has not used their critical thought or is not using their critical thought to arrive at conclusions or when discussing differences of opinion with you. Here's what can happen. You can think to yourself, I personally am very interested in arriving at my opinions based on the recognition of certain non-subjective truths. I expect that of myself. And when you look out at people on the other side of the argument, maybe you perceive that they're not doing that, that they're not interested in that. They're not interested in being emotionally and intellectually honest enough to consider some things uh, that they don't that don't appeal to them that they're emotionally turned off from and things of that nature so the guide for me in those circumstances is always the law of individual inherent rights responsibility and authority you remember what that is that's the concept of uh, we're all walking around in a bubble or with a, a circle around our feet and within that circle is where all of our individual inherent rights responsibility and authority exist outside of that circle in the sand or outside of that bubble we have none the only exception to that is if we have children underage children dependent children so using that as my guide When I get into a conversation with somebody or I see people showing no interest whatsoever in intellectual or emotional honesty, you know, that's one that bothers me. In fact, if I perceive that I'm in a conversation with somebody who's who's not being intellectually or emotionally honest, I don't continue that conversation. I don't continue conversations like that because there's no, it's, you know, thinking about a cost benefit analysis. There's no, the cost is high. The cost is your time, your inner peace, your energy, and the benefits are what? Nothing. Because if I'm having a conversation with somebody who is asserting that the sky is purple and I'm looking at the sky and it's blue, where do you think you're going to get at with a person operating on such an emotionally dishonest and intellectually dishonest premise or platform you're not going to get anywhere you say well if I reason with them masterfully enough no no because we're not talking about somebody using reason the person is not presenting an argument based on reason the person is uh, presenting an argument based on emotion think about all the times I've told you that emotions do not determine reality in real life how we feel about a thing has no bearing whatsoever on how a thing just is or isn't but when you get into a conversation with people who determine their realities based on their feelings how are you going to reason with somebody how are you going to reason somebody out of that it's like recovery you know a person recovery only works when a person himself or herself is ready when they when internally they are they are ready for themselves to do it for themselves but before that all the information that you present to them and lay at their feet will do no good they're not going to make use of it you see because the value the real value of information is not reading the information the real value of information is somebody internalizing it chewing it over uh, considering it and you, you can't make a person do that. <laughs> you cannot make a person do the part that is most important, that matters. 
And so that goes back to this conversation with people who are uh, not emotionally or intellectually honest. So I won't even have a, I won't continue, let's say, a conversation with somebody who I perceive is not being intellectually or emotionally honest. Is that frustrating for me sometimes? Sure it is. You get into the conversation, you you have a, a, a fantastic argument, your, your reasoning is completely sound, and you, and you recognize that the person, no matter how sound your reasoning is, is not open to hearing. If they're not open to hearing, that's your opportunity to save yourself a lot of frustration, wasted time, wasted energy, wasted emotion, and just stop the conversation. Go have a conversation with somebody else who's more receptive. The law of individual inherent rights and responsibility and authority, when I consider it, <clears throat> causes me to ask questions like this. Perceiving the person who is not being intellectually or emotionally honest, I say, is that person allowed to be emotionally and intellectually dishonest? And the answer is yes. They're allowed to do whatever they want. Do I have any rights over how they are choosing to be emotionally or intellectually dishonest? Nope, don't have no rights over them. Do I have any responsibilities over them doing that? In other words, is it my responsibility to help them see the way uh, into emotional and intellectual honesty and escape emotional and intellectual dishonesty? Nope, not my responsibility. Uh, who do I have a responsibility over to make sure he's doing that? Uh, me. Uh, do you see how the law of individual inherent rights, responsibility, and authority makes allowances and keeps my focus where it needs to be? Let's go ahead and throw authority in there, too. Do I have any authority over that person? No, I don't. So I can say, you know, it's just not right. Being emotionally dishonest, being intellectually dishonest, is not right. People shouldn't do it. And I'm right. People shouldn't do that. It's not the right way to live. It's not the right way to converse with other people in an emotionally and intellectually dishonest way. But do I have any rights, responsibility, and authority over that person to make them or cause them or judge their choices in life no not even when they're not healthy or um, they're not fair I still don't have any rights over that person to say you know what you should be emotionally honest or intellectually honest you see emotional health involves acknowledging recognizing what other people are doing unhealthy or in unhealthy ways or doing wrong and then to turn that observation inward, to use it for our self-benefit, not for changing other people or policing other people. Mm -hmm.